Hello. Hey, Mario. I told him to turn off. And he didn't. Let me just record that. What page was it last week? How old? I, I, I wasn't here last week. No, not last week. It, now it's three weeks ago. I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't mark it. Hostevila. Oh yeah, I'm right. Three one nine. Oh good. Yeah, that also. This is you never, you never turn the, you never close the zoom. Say again. You never close the zoom, so it's recording, recording, recording. I did close the zoom. I said stop recording. You heard it say stop recording. And then what's the next step? And now, right now, I just now I just started the recording. No, but at the end. No, you didn't start. I'm already four minutes in, and it's recording. But when I stopped you finish, the other. But I stopped the other recording. When you yes, I know. But when you stop recording, you have to go leave the meeting. I left the meeting. Yeah, you left, but you didn't click leave the meeting. Of course, I did. I said leave. That's the only way to leave. Okay. Well. So did they hear all your music? That you I am not hosting. It's you who is hosting now. Can you get out of the? Can, can can we get out of it so you can host, and and that way we don't have any of these issues? No, How no, do I, no. I don't. I don't have any issue. The thing is, it's already five and a half minutes that's recording nothing. I what about the you. other? What about the other? The other stuff got recorded though. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good evening, Mario. Uh, Bernie is here at my house. Oh, okay. Okay. So we finished the we finished. We 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 we're on we're in the subject of Vestos. And we got to page 358. The definition what? of sex. You sure? Yeah, I have 358. Yeah, yes. 358. Yeah, we did the Orzarua. Yeah, yeah. We right. Oh, okay. Moshe is machmir like the Orzarua. You know, we oh, do, yeah. is the owner 12 hours or is it 24 hours? So, so we, the, it's usually 24 hours. You know, it's, let's say uh, every 30th day or every 25th day. Okay, so what do you, what do you have to, what do the husband and wife have to do on the day of the Veset? Right? We're on page 358. What is the definition of separation as it relates to the, when the Veset comes? It seems like the primary definition of the term Prisha, separation given by the Gemara, commentaries and post is abstaining from relations. And this is the opinion given by the Shulchan Aruch, as the, as the Shach explains, <clears throat> who writes that hugging and kissing is permitted. Though the Shach cites the Bach, right? The Bach is the commentator on the tour who adds that one who is stringent regarding hugging and kissing will be blessed. Says the Shulchan Aruch in Yorodeh Kuk Peitalad, the Shach's Vesta on that 30th day or the 25th day, whatever the Vesta day is for that 24 hour period, ona achas. They have to separate from each other for 24 hours. So, for example, if she doesn't bleed on that day, so the 31st day or the 30s, those are not anymore prohibited anymore. Now, we're going to learn that in order to have relations, you have to do a badika. And, you, and if the badika is clean, then they can have relations. 
uh, it's only on the 30th day because since it's expected that it might open up. But now since after the 30th day, she could bleed any time, we don't just like, we don't just allow willy nilly having relations. You have to do a badika prior to that as, as we will learn. However, says the Shukhrach, they're not prevented mishar krivus elamish tash mishamita bilvad. Other intimate events they're allowed to do. And says the Shach there, the law mishar krivus mashma fil chibuk venishuk shari. The Shach says directly that hugging and kissing are allowed. Kimosh posak beis Yosef and mashmas aposkin. The way the beis Yosef had. Joseph, when he was commenting on the tour, he writes that who prohibits the Bach also said you could you din they could be they could do hugging and kissing, but if they stay away from it, they'll get a bracha. However, the Taz. Right, there are two major commentaries on your day. If you open up Shulchan Aruch, on one side you see the Shach, on the other side you see the Taz. So the Taz says intimate physical contact is forbidden during the period of the Vesant. The Lo Mishar Krivus Beis Yosef Kosov, the Filo Chibu Nishik Mutter. The Taz tells us that Beis Yosef permitted. The Loi Chayshin and Labia. We're not worried that the hugging and kissing will lead to relations. Even Shabia Isr Drabonon, we're not Goizer because the whole Bia there is only in Isr Drabonon. The law Kitrum Sadesh and Shakos of Isr Bechibuk Venishik. And the Beis Yosef was not Pasking like the Trum Sadesh who held that it was Usr to embrace. The cause of Mori Chami Zal. The tour says, My father in law said. Now, who is the Taz's father in law? The Bach, the Bach, right? Li nira shosher min adin ladas arosh. V'raya misimin shin pe gimel. Cause of arosh lin avelis. She yesh lachmer v'chibuk v'nishik. Shu mevi l'dei cheshek. V'hu adin nami hacha. The rosh says b'feirush. So we have a taz that is machmir. It's just important to learn, really, this uh, this whole and now this. Uh, this gives us the methodology. Shulchan Aruch, there's a comment there by the Shach, but you see the Taz brings us a Rishon who's more machmir. So what do we do? How do we pask it? According to Shulchan Aruch Harav, that is the Shulchan Aruch of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, not only is hugging and kissing forbidden, but sleeping in the same bed is also forbidden during that 24 hour period of the Veset. Shulchan Aruch says, Afilu chibuk v'nishuk shorit kein dasa beis Yosef v'ramot. Says It leads to desire. The relations. Says the Rab So now that we've been through, the Shochanach seems to be lenient. The Ramah is lenient. The Beis Yosef was lenient. The Shach was lenient. So we have the Taz who quotes the Rosh to be more machmir. So what's the practical halacha? By the way, I'm just giving everybody an insight. When you go through the <coughs> study of smicha and you're learning all the dinim of Isr, Veheter, and Bozmachol, it's exactly the same process. The Shukhanoch brings a halacha and the Ramah brings a halacha. Then the Shach and the Taz comment. The question is, how do we pass in Bisman Azeh? Each, so it's not, you can't just open up the Shulchan Aruch and say, oh, there's the halacha. It's the, the you know, how did the, how do the modern day poskim hold by all of these various issues? So, you know, we don't see a, a, a many halacha. Sometimes we can pass him directly from the Shulchan Aruch. But this gives us the example where you can, because you got to see how it ended up. A 
according to the Darche Tahara, that who's a mo- modern day posing, hugging and kissing are permitted. The one who is concerned that it may lead to more intimate contact should be stringent. Right on the day of the Veset, the woman hasn't seen blood yet. It's only We're only concerned since it's the 30th day since the last time she bled and she's had a chazaka three times that she might bleed. You're only also to have relations. However, yesh osri. If we were being given a test, and we would and we would be asked who are the Yesh Osrim, but we know it's the Bach, it's the Taz, it's the Rosh, that they're relying on the Rosh, right? The Bach didn't really ask her, he just said the Tobol of Brocha who restrained. La Locha Nogim Lahatar Khibuk Benishuk, Achim Odim Makir Satsmo, person knows himself, Yodesh Dabar Zavul Avil Tatra Shamito, Lisa Macher and Yirchat Mizer. Just stay away from it. Now. About Ashkenazi poskim, Rav Fivel Kohen rules similar, similarly in the Bari Ashokim, that hugging and kissing are permitted, but not one who refrains is praiseworthy. The Bari Ashokim says, "Vinei Avshemikra din kaimel and kedas Ashokim arch bezeh." We all like the Ashokim arch kaspa poskim. Shamachmir, whoever is more stringent, bechibu benishu kshakir shol katavol of brach. Shav brach. Okay. That's a very important halacha. Now, we have two kinds of veset. Veset kavua and a veset she'ena kavua. So far, we have seen some of the halachas that apply to the time of the veset, when we expect that the menstrual bleeding may begin. Now, we'll now focus on understanding how the time period of the veset is determined. How can we know when our expected bleeding may begin? The Gemara in commentaries refer to two types of vessel. A vessel kavua, which is a fixed vessel where a woman bleeds at the same time each month. So we're, t- like, we're talking about, like, let's say, on the fifth of Cheshvan or the first of Cheshvan. And then there's a vessel shena kavua, a fluctuating vessel where the menstrual bleeding begins at a slightly different time each month. And each of these two categories has somewhat different halachas that pertain to it. So in the time of Chazal, many women experienced their monthly cycle on a very precise regular basis, known as a Veset Kavua. Veset Kavua is established by a pattern of the monthly period beginning at the same time, three times consecutively. And there are multiple types of patterns recognized by Chazal as establishing a Veset Kavua many of which are summarized by the Darche Tahara in the source below. Bikviyas Vesta Yeshnim Shnei Sugimi Karim. Vestos Zman, that is a Veset related to time, and Vestos Guf. What are Vestos Zman? Veset Ha Haflaga. Hainu Veset Sheboyesh Merchak Yamim Kavua Ben Re'ileria. This is a set time between bleeding sites. For example, she bleeds every 30 days. That's a Veset HaFlog. Then there's a Veset HaChodesh. Re'i HaChodesh finishes beyond the Siyom Rukul B'Chodesh. Ha'ivri. She bleeds on the fifth day of Cheshvan, on the fifth of every month. Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, Teves. That's called a Veset HaChodesh. Then Veset HaShavua. Re'i HaMegia beyond the Siyom B'Shavua, Kavur Mispar Shavuot Kavua. It begins on the same day, every Monday. Let's say in the in the four weeks after her last plea, it was on a Monday, but it's always the same day of the week. Veset hadiluk chodesh, riyam megiya betarcha mishdan kol chodesh betzur kavua kagon echad tishrei dalat chetver and zayin kislev echadoma. It moves. It's the first of the month, and the next it's the fourth, and the seventh, and then the te- next time would be when the tenth. Because it's, it's the three number of days for each cycle, even if it doesn't correspond to the month. No, and then it starts moving. No, look, it's thirty-three days. Is the way but then the next, there. no, because Echad Tishrei, Dalit Cheshvan, then Zion Kislev. It it's moving three days distant every month. 
That's so the next month you'd expect 10th. You would exactly you would. Yeah, it's a 33 day cycle. But you no, know, the first month it was the first month it was 34. Yeah, then 33. Yeah. Even the date changes. It's three days later than that of the previous month. Now, Veset Hadiluk Hafloga. Re'iya Megiya Bafloga Soy Lechas for Gugdo. That's what it says in English. This is where the period begins based on a flix fluctuation in the number of days in between each cycle, such as where one time it begins 20 days after the previous cycle, the next time it begins 22 days, and the third time it begins 24 days, each month two days later. This is where she sees on a fixed date, but only every other or third month. She has two different vestos that coincide. Let's say every third days, every 30 days, and it's always like the first of the month. That may not work that way because some months are 29 days. Now, everything we just described are vestos that move based on time. Now, what about vestos haguv? Sugno sof shal vestos u vestos haguv. Shalafamim boim biyachad ima vestos de le'el. Lafamim benifrat gam be vestos elu yesh ne sugim. Vestos haguv siba. Isha she'ena roa a woman who only sees after some kind of action. She goes bicycling. She does exercise. Or jumping. She eats spaghetti and meatballs and, and she has her period. Or she eats something harif, spicy. Or chametz. That might trigger the period. Now, there's also, that's a seba. That's a reason for the period. Then there's sometimes something that happens to her in her body that's a simon. She has a certain agosha. Some ruris, chills, ke'evim, uh, pelvic pain, fiukim, she, she yawns. And this occurs with many women. Now, Mordechai Eliyahu, Rav Mordechai Eliyahu, the former chief rabbi, is the author of Darche Tahara. I'm reading the footnote. Although Rav Eliyahu here assumes that this vessel is common among many women, it should be noted that according to many authorities, not every manifestation of such a symptom is adamantly considered a vessel aguf. Rather, she must experience an unusual type symptom, such as unusual cramps, an unusual headache, or other symptoms that are not typical, like a common cold, right? Now, a woman who has a vesit kavua of any of these types would be required to treat that time alone as her vesit and observe all the alachos we discussed previously in this year during that time. So if she has this vesit where uh, on the fifth day of every month, she has her period. So that's the ona that when the fifth day of the month occurs for a 24 hour period, just stay away from her husband. They can't sleep together. They can hug and kiss. But according to the Shulchan Ha'ra, they should not sleep in the same bed. But day 30, on the next day, she's going to be permitted to her husband. It's only that period of that 24 hour period. Where there's a prohibition. Nowadays, the majority of women experience a vesit she'ena kavua, where their cycles fluctuate somewhat from month to month. It's still possible for women to begin to experience a more regular pattern of menstrual bleeding. Therefore, the halacha is that she must treat three of the more common types of vestos as her vesit time, at least partially every month, namely vesit achodesh, which was the same day of the month. Excuse me. Yeah, same day of the month. Mm -hmm. Vesit avloga, which we said, let's say she bleeds every 25 days. Which, which might be a different day of the month, and an ona bainanis. What's an ona bainanis? That's the average day on which many women experience their monthly period. 
The Yonah Benanis in the footnote is not one of the kids of Vesut Kavua. It's simply an estimation that perhaps one will bleed on the 30th day following her last period because many women see on this day. If she always bled on the 30th day, then that's a, that's a Vesut Kavua. But let's say she doesn't have that. But uh, that's since many women bleed every 30th day, she has to consider that a Vesut. And that's called an Ona Benanis. According to Shulchan Aruch, one treats the 30th day after the beginning of the previous month's period as the day of the Ona Benanis. The Shulchan Aruch says in Kuf Peites, called Isha She'en La Vesis Kavua. Let's say she doesn't have a Vesis Kavua. She doesn't bleed every, on the fifth of every month. She doesn't bleed every 25 days or 28 days. Doesn't make a difference. She has to count 30 days from the first day of bleeding that she had the previous month, shehu oyne beninis l'stam noshim. It's considered the mean or the median day that most women will bleed after their period. V'im yesh lo veses kavua l'zman yadua, mechaf l'chaf, or mechaf l'chafei, choy sheshes l'zman yadua as well. Shulchan Aruch says then she'd have a double veset. She'd have to do it on the 30th day, but also on the, every 25th day. The Dark Yata provides a practical example. To illustrate this rule of Ona Beninis. Ona Beninis, who Tarik Mumutsa, median, the Rav Anoshim, who Yom Ashlishin with Chilas Riyasa, 30 days from when she last saw, the Ainu Isha She at Chilali wrote beyond Rishon Bishavua. She saw on Sunday. Tzricha Lakshash Felifrish Mibala Biom Sheni Shlacha Abish after four weeks. The Monday will be the 30th day from when she started bleeding. Now, Vimot Teira'e, but also Yom Sheni, Tiyem Uteres Tabayla Mele Shlisha Ve'elech La'acha Shabbat Ka'atzma. So this is the basic halacha of Vestos. She's going to be prohibited for that 30th day, but the next day, she's allowed to her husband with a bedika, because we are choshish that she could start bleeding any time. Although the Shulchan Aruch clearly holds that the 30th day treats it as the Yonah Beninis, there are some achronim, such as the Chavistas and the Lechem the Simla, who suggests that the Ona Benin should be kept on the 31st day and following the previous month's period. And some Ashkenazi posts can follow this approach and keep the 31st day as the Ona Benin is, while other Ashkenazi are stringent and keep both the 30th and 31st day as the Ona Benin is. Nevertheless, the accepted practice by most Ashkenazi and Sephardim is to keep only the 30th day. As noted by Rav Mordechai Liyah, Yesha Oimim, Sha'oyne Benedis Duayoma 31. Ve'en machmir and kamoisim, but we are not machmir like them. So that's again, we see a lot of opinions, but then there's a normative practice, and, and, the, and the Mordechai Leal gives you the, norm, the normative practice. I'm sorry, I had, I'm sorry, I'm drinking so much. I had the booster today. So I'm trying to hydrate well um, because they say that works well. I've also taken a lot of Tylenol. Okay. Tell me about it. <laughs> you won't sleep. It was a tough day. Yeah. So far, so good. Hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, the, yeah. I had the flu shot like two weeks ago. I didn't have any problem with that. No. No, but Sentinella gave out. The booster today, oh. yeah, to the doctors mm -hmm. and to the employees at the hospital. Which one did you have? I had the Pfizer. This Pfizer. Is, it's the only one that's authorized right now. It's the only booster mm -hmm. that's available right now. No, oh, well, and, and they give you the same. They give you you get the exact same dose as the first yeah. two vaccines. No, no, no. It's not a reduced. Moderna also. So I don't. Moderna, I guess it's not, the, the booster has not been authorized by the FDA. For, but I, I, had it. I had the Moderna also, sir. And I had the flu shot at the same time yesterday. But now I'm feeling better. Today was a bad, uh, it was tough. So you mean the, there are people who they're giving a Moderna even though it hasn't been authorized? Want another vaccine. Correct. Okay, so they Correct. Because if I had, I had Moderna to start with, I don't want to go to Pfizer now. No, they say you shouldn't. I was told that next week that there was going to be approval for Moderna. Yeah. We're going to start yeah. releasing. Not a dose. 
Yeah, but a smaller thought, dose. But but it's going to be released. I mean, it's probably going to be. Yeah. But yes, they had the same dose. So I don't know exactly what happened. So, okay. Yeah, they gave you, they should have given you the same, they gave you the same dose. As Correct. In, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's the same thing they did with the, with this one. Okay. What about Yom HaChodesh? The second of the three Vestos that must be considered is the Yom HaChodesh, which is based upon what the Shukhrar called the Veset HaChodesh. Rosa Gimel Pami. Let's say a woman saw bleeding three consecutive times. Echad Benisan, Echad Be'ir, Echad Besifa. The first day of, the, of three consecutive months. O Behe Benisan, O Behe Be'ir, Behe Benisan. Veset. That's called the Yom HaChodesh. So even though consecutive months, one month is a 30-day month and the other day is a 29-day month. So it's not the same amount of days in between. We do it based on the day of the month. So every fifth day of the month, the Hebrew calendar is her vessel. Thus, one who sees on the same monthly date for three consecutive times treats the date as her vesit kavua. Similarly, one without a vesit kavua still treats the date on which she bled in the previous months as a vesit she'ena kavua. So that means if she, she doesn't have three months in a row, but last month she bled on the fifth of the month, so the next month, she has to keep a veset for the fifth of the month. Then the third veset is this veset haflaga, which is described as a veset kavua. So that's a case where one bleeds every 25 days or every 20 days or every 30 days. Based upon the veset kavua, veset haflaga, veset haflaga, one who has a veset she'ena kavua. Most of our women don't have any of these vestos meaning they have a veset she'ena kavua. So you have to treat the date interval of their previous period as their veset. That means even before a woman has established three consecutive chazakas. So for example, if last month she bled after 20 days, when 20 days come, she has to separate from her husband. Same thing if it happened on the fifth of the month. Next time, she has to treat the same thing. So what is the halacha in a case where a woman does not always see on a specific date or interval, but does always see within a specific interval of days? such as within the third to the sixth of the Hebrew month, or at an interval of between 28 and 31 days, does she have to keep like a three-day veset? The Ramo may in fact have discussed such a case. According to the Ramo, for women sees her period a few days early or late, she must separate from her husband a few days early or late as well. Says the Ramo, Let's say this month it came two or three days earlier, or, or three days later, She'll have to do the same thing the following month. The Akronim dispute whether the Ramah refers to a case of a Veset Kavua, Veset Chena Kavua. According to the Shach and the Gra, the ruling of the Ramah refers to a woman with a Veset Kavua then sees on a different date that is within a few days, that is within, the, that is within a few days of the regular time. Thus the Ramah is saying that in such a case, she must be stringent and keep both days as a Veset. However, the Noi de Behuda understands the case to be a woman with a Veset Shena Kavua, where every month she always sees her period <laughs> with, within a certain number of days. And in this case, she must treat every day during this period as a Veset. This case called the Noi de Behuda is called the Yemei Mavolcha. Mavolcha means confused, the days of confusion, since she does not know which day she should be considered Veset. And these opinions are summarized by the Mara Cohen, who's a contemporary posing. Isha she'en la'yom kavua l'ri also. Woman doesn't have a set date. El regil l'ros b'yomim 
Kigot, she, she bleeds Kigot Shregil Rose Ben Kaf Tesla on the base, 29 to 32 days. Or Vachais Rosso Baflagas Kaf Tesla, Lamed Aleph, Lamed Base. It jumps around 29, 31, 32, 30, 31, 29, 32. So Minadin Enlo Vesis Kavua. Vachoshes Rakli Yom Lamed Base. Midin Vesis Aflagas Shena Kavua. She should count 32 days from the last bleed. Or the 30th day, like we said, is known as Beninis. And the, the day of the month, Does she have to be concerned for all these days between 29 and 32? Or only a days that can correspond to what we said, on a this would be every 30 days. Vezat HaChodesh would be the fifth of the month. Vezat HaVlog would be every 25 days. That means she might have to keep all three of those. If you're saying that's common today, that the, there is a most women don't have a uh, regular That's a problem for them. So that means they have to- uh, Be worried for these other three. Multiple days. Correct. Correct. They have to be to the on a this means 30th day, 30, 30 days from their last bleeding, they'd have to separate as, as an owner. Also, if, it, if the last month she bled on the fifth of the month, she would have to separate on the fifth of the month as well. It might not be the same as the 30th day, right? Okay. The postkim that are machmer on these days of confusion. There's a debate how many days are considered in that. Some forbid for seven days. Let's say a woman bleeds every 28 to 34 days. So there are machmer that'll say she'll have to separate for seven days. It depends on how many days she bleeds for. She wouldn't have to do more than what she's how many days she bleeds. It would have to be more than four days. Some say you don't have to do more than three days. As mentioned above, a woman establishes a vessel kavua by seeing blood according to the same regular pattern three times consecutively. And this is mentioned by the Shulchan Aruch. Kate said, How does she establish her vessel? We're going to talk about four different rios. In between these four, there were th- three periods of equal days. For all the stuff, half yom, twenty, 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 twenty. Zen nikra veset haflagot. That's being separated by number of days. Blachain srikha dalad reios. Sharia rishoyne enim and amina. If you shayne baflaga, the first rio doesn't count as establishing that twenty-day count. So, so she needs four reios to establish or to uproot a prior veset. So, if after establishing a veset kavua. Let's say she has a vesit kavu of every 25 days. And now one sees blood at a time other than what is expected. So then let's say she's done that six months in a row. Then the seventh month, she all of a sudden bleeds after 40 days. According to this pattern, one must still still treat the vesit kavu as a vesit, but must also treat the vesit shayna kavu based upon the most recent menstrual period. So you're going to have to uproot the original vesit three times. There are, that means if she established a visit and she's bleeding every 20 days, you'll have to bleed not 20 days, three different times to uproot that original visit. Until then, she'll have to keep both. She'll have to have a visit every 20 days and on whatever the last month was. Let's say that month she bled 25 days ago. So she'll have to have day 20 and day 25. That's what the Shulchan is saying here. One who has a vested kavua can uproot it by seeing the monthly period at three times other than those that were expected according to the vested, like we just said. Just as the vested kavua was established by three-time pattern, 
so too it is uprooted in the same manner. We see that Masech Tanida. You got to uproot it three times. Um, yeah. Does that mean she then had established a new Vesek Shavua, whatever that number of days was that it had changed to? If it's, if they're, if it's all the same, if they're all the same. And it's, it's not all the same. It uproots the prior Vesek, and now she's Vesek She'ena Kavua, and has to keep on a Bainanis, and on a month, and on a Haflaga, those three special days. This is a, this is, this is probably the most complicated sugya we've learned in Nida. And in fact, you're going to see, you need to keep a chart. You'll see in the next page. The Shulchan Aruch records this halach as well. Exactly what Bernie said. If now, after having established for three times in a row, it was actually four times, 20 day bleeding, now, if for the next three months she bleeds every 30 days, so the original vesset of 20 days goes away, but now she's established a new vesset of 30 days. And now the next month will be the vesset will be 30 days. Now, the Chochmah Sodom, who's the Chochmah Sodom? It's the Chaya Yodom. It's the Chaya Yodom that we know wrote on Orachayim. The Chochmah Sodom is Chaya Yodom on Yoridea, Yisra Vehetra. Chochmah Sodom suggests writing down which days a woman began bleeding so she can probably evaluate her status vis-a-vis her vessel. I wrote to Lakai Mitzvah's preacher, Kitikun, if you want to do this halacha properly, Yizar Lichtov Tamid Yama Vesef, Vaz Yuchalach Shav Yimei Vesta Kitikun. And Rav Mordechai Eleo recommends using a tsar, similar to the one below, with a Hebrew calendar to assist in calculating the vessel, Hebrew date of bleeding, day of the week, day or night, interval, bodily symptoms, that's the times to observe. In recent years, there are phone apps and computer programs that have been developed that assist in calculating one's vessel. And they give you a number of sources in the footnotes. Listen to this footnote and what the Chochmas Adam said. The Chochmas Adam formulates the suggestion in the masculine, which seems to indicate that he feels the husband should calculate the vessel. This supports the notion that the husband should be actively involved in the process of nida, in addition to simply observing the harachakos. For this reason, it's important for the husband to study the halachos of nida as well as the wife. It also says in the Torah, she shall count for herself, from which Chazal understood a woman may believe and trusted to manage her own purity status, irrespective of the husband's involvement. So when we say, we refer to this as well. We rely on our women who tell us that they are tohor. It's eight echad. And remember, a woman could be an eight echad when she comes back from China and tells us that her husband is dead. Eight echad always refers to a non-typical edus of two men, adult kosher edim. So it could be a, an eved, it could be a cotton, it could be a non-Jew. Not always a non-Jew because that's only the fitumo. But, but certainly Anisha by eight echad and when, it, and when our women tell us that our kitchens are kosher, that they're, they're, it's eight echad naman bisurim. It's the same concept. Is there anything in there left? No, 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 no. One second. Oh, I don't want to. Okay. Once I want to know who had to share his makayim all these halochas. What do you mean? <laughs> well, we, we did. <laughs> he drank so much, he had to go to the bathroom. You're not going to sleep too much. He right? needs a urologist, a good urologist. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to send him to a good urologist <laughs> to make sure. Recommending you wear an indwelling catheter tonight. I have Ernie, Ernie, you're okay. Very good bladder. I don't need a your I have a very good bladder, thank God. I'm drinking a lot. You don't see me. Why don't you you drink water, Ernie? That's more healthy. That that diet, uh, you know, what you're drinking over there is not exactly the right uh, hydration. Why not? 
Drink some coconut water. Okay, what about birth control? And, and how does that play the role in Vesa? Many women today are on birth control during various points in their lives. How does birth control, and specifically birth control pills, which regulates women's reproductive hormones and menstrual processes, affect the proper implementation of laws of Vesa? The Radbaz. was asked about a similar question concerning a specific drink. The Rabbaz lived 500 years ago that seemed to be of effective in preventive bleeding. The Rabbaz rules that if a woman uses such a substance and the substance is in fact effective, she did not observe any of the vessels while she's taking the drink. You can rely on it. They have to separate. Let's say she has a veset every 30 days. So they have to separate on that day. But but they'll be permitted afterwards. Of course, with bedika. And if she has drunk the drink three times and it prevents bleeding, so she can have relations without a bedika. Based on this position of the Radbaz, many contemporary posts can rule that the same should certainly apply concerning modern birth control pills, which are successful in re regulating the menstrual cycle. Machon Pua holds that one should abstain from relations beginning from 36 hours after stopping to take the pill. Isha shenoitlois glulois sheoimrois limnod dimumim bizmaneti losam a woman who's taking pills that prevent her bleeding, they don't have to worry about a vessel come. However, but if after they stop taking the pills, 36 shows they have to be worried that they can start bleeding after 36 hours. Or until she bleeds or until seven days pass. That's the time that the vessel can be laid to do the influence of the pills. As soon as she goes off birth control, she reverts back to whatever type of message she had before she began taking birth control. That means if she comes off the birth control and it's the fifth of Sivan, and she always sees on the fifth of the month, she'd have to keep that vessel. Right? After she stops taking the birth control, he she has to go back to the original vessel. She didn't have a vessel come before. We know now the din of a woman who doesn't have a vessel of what meaning she has to keep the Yom Chodesh, 30 days, and then he have flogga. It's like a, a woman who is nursing who now returns to see blood again. It has to be done according to her vessel. How do you perform the bedika during the vessel? Since the purpose of the veset is to pr prepare for the possibility that the menstrual bleeding will begin shortly, the halacha is that one must perform a bedik at the time of the veset. What happens if one did not perform the required bedika? Is she forbidden to her husband when the veset comes? That means day 30 arrives. She has to do a bedika on day 30. It's not just enough that they refrain. She has to do a bedika. Because we suspect that she might bleed on that day. Now we said that after the day of the vessel, she's permitted to her husband. But is that allowed even if she didn't do the required bedika? So the Gemara Nida discusses this. Kitanai. Rav Yezra Oymer Tmei Nida. If she didn't examine herself, we assume that she's a nida. Rabbi Yeshua Amir no. She has to check herself. If it's clean, then she's then she's tore. 
The Rambam rules that if the husband was traveling and his wife was not Anita before he left, he may assume that she is permitted to him. It seems from the Rambam that she is permitted to him even if she has not performed a bedika following her veset, since he does make a chiluk. Right? The Rambam says in Hilchas Yisurebiya, Halach Bailam Dinas Acheres. He went to China. Vinichata, when he went, she was torn. When she comes back, when he comes back, he doesn't have to ask the details. Even if he found her asleep, he can have her relations with her. If it's not the time of Reveset, we don't have to worry. Now, how come if we, we said that, oh, let's say she didn't do a Badika, you can't have relations without the Badika, why did the Ramam say she needed a Badika? Now, all of this applies only if, she, when he left, she was not a Nida. Because Chazaka is that she's Tohar. There, you just can't have relations with her while she's sleeping. She has to be awake to say, you know, I am Tohar now. Went to the mikvah, I'm clean. Okay. The Rashba distinguishes between a Veset Kavua, for which she's forbidden to her husband without a Badika, and a Veset Shena Kavua, for which she's permitted after the fact even without a bedika. He also comments that for these purposes, the owner benanit, that meaning uh, 30, 30 days is treated as a vesa kavua. Therefore, she would require bedika following the owner benanis. Let's say she did not check herself at the time of her veset. She's prohibited until she checks. She checked and she's tore, she's tore. She didn't feel it. The whole din of Vesas is, is Drabon and not Deraisa. If she didn't check during the, let's say, every 30 days or on the fifth of the month, she's torn and, and doesn't need a bedika. The Koshlo Higisha Bedam Bishaz Vesta, she didn't feel. That her gasha at the time of the vesset, even if she didn't check, she remains becheskes tahara. Even shein la vesset kavua, it's only for the vesset kavua that it's a strong chazaka. Shein iser ona zul mirabbonim. This twenty-four hour period where they have to separate is only mirabbonim. Ba meid varma when we vesset shein a kavua ba. Vahavi lo bepochos mo'in a beninis, and it's less than every thirty days. Avalona beninis shishloshim yomer ayu love kavesset kavua la davar zeh. Every 30 days is like a regular vesset. She needs a bedika. The Shulchan Aruch first cites the opinion of the, Raj, the Rambam anonymously. And remember, the way we analyze the Rambam, he came out that he didn't require bedika. Then mentions the more stringent opinion of the Rajba as a yeshonri, right? Over a vesset, if, if it's now beyond the vesset. She didn't do bedika. She didn't feel anything. Tohaira below bedika. The yesh oimrim, that's the Rajba. She's prohibited unless she does a bedika. Or on the day of the 30th day, she requires a bedika as well. What is our armal? And this is the practice. And the Shulch in Simon 189 reports this halacha again, but he cites only the more stringent opinion presented as the Yeshonrim in 184. If she has a vessel kavua, even though it passed the vessel, she didn't feel she's prohibited until she checks herself and finds herself torn. And then if she doesn't have a vessel kavua, right? The 30 days is treated like a vessel kavua where she would be usher without the bedika. So what's the practical halacha of Zman Azeh? Rav Mordechai Eliyar rules practically that a bedika is required even after the fact for Vesit Kavua and Ona Beninis. Concerning a Vesit Shein a Kavua of this Vesit HaChodesh and HaFloga, right? The fifth of every month or 25 days since the last period. 
There, if she went, if she didn't do a bedika on the day of that vessel, yeah, he rules that bedika is not required after the fact, though it's proper to perform one. She's prohibited until she checks. On the 5th of Cheshvan, let's say every 20 days or every 30 days. It's, it's a good thing to check. Rav Shlom, Shlomo Levi also writes that one should perform a bedika. This bedika requirement is if you have a vessel kavua, and the vessel chain kavua voina bein in this. Okay, so these are the laws of the vessel. I would like to begin the last sh shear we will have. We won't finish it tonight, but this is gynecological procedures and birth. And how it affects Nida, page 381. Mir Tzashem, uh, next week we may start as well, volume eight, or Chaim. Because I think we will finish this last one. Um, so we'll probably be able to start the new one. So those of you who do not have I think all of you have volume eight. Those of you who don't have volume eight can come to my home and get it. I also have volume nine. Uh, the Mondera family and the Feinblum family graciously donated that volume to the Tsurba. And volume nine is already the second volume in Orachayim. So Bernie gave me 10 volumes. I think Walter has others if people yeah, need. Yeah, if anybody needs, I have for them. So I, I also have, Bernie brought me 10. So there's no cost. Yeah. Whoever wants to come by my home, I'm happy to give him out. Okay, and if you need more, I have more for you. Yes, Wait, you have, we have You have nine or number 10, I'm sorry. No, nine. Nine. Ten is not, ten is not out. <laughs> okay, so who By the way, by the way nine, nine? nine is Hilchas Tfilin, Hilchas Tzitzis. He had, they happens to have Hilchas Lulav there. There, there's very nice halachos, but Or Chaim, we will start. Volume eight starts with uh, Natilis Yadayim. It starts with how you get up in the morning. It starts uh, from Or Chaim. That's volume eight. Yeah, so someone hold one for me, please. You don't have volume eight? Eight I have. No, I don't have nine. Okay, I, okay, volume okay. nine you can get from me or I'll bring it to you and show if you're Chaim, right. you can get from me nine, uh, no problem. So let's do 381. We begin a final shear of this volume on Hilchos Nida with an overview of some of the halachic questions related to gynecological examinations in childbirth. The Tanoim debate the status of a woman whose uterus opens in the following Mishnah. According to Tanakama, she becomes richly impure only if she discharges blood from her uterus. However, according to Rabbi Yehuda, a woman becomes impure even if there is no bleeding at all because of a principle known as it's impossible for the womb, the uterus, to open without blood. This means that in his opinion, cervical dilation is always accompanied by at least minimal bleeding, even if one did not see any blood. When you have a gynecological examination, they will sometimes dilate the cervix. So even if no blood is seen, this would be a machlokas between the Tanakam and Rabbi Uda. According to Tanakam, if there's no blood, she would not be a nida. According to Rabbi Uda, it's physically impossible for the cervix to open and not there be some blood, so she would be defined as a nida. Let's see how the Mishnah discusses it. Hamapelas chaticha. The Mishnah talks about her miscarrying a piece of flesh. She's had a miscarriage. Well, you can't have a miscarriage without the opening of the cervix opening a little bit so that the piece could be discharged. So the Tanakhama says, Im yesh im adam bim lav If along with that piece came blood, so she's a nida. If there's no blood, Tanakhama says she's not a nida. Why? She sakever below dam. Very interesting that the Chazal turned the uterus a kever because it's in essence 
birth. from birth. Well, it, it also has a mystical concepts that, that uh, you also were born, it's a form of death when you come out, you know, the, the fetus had a certain life and now he comes out and, 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 and from birth to death, death to birth, it's, it's got that kind of mystical meaning. The Rambam rules in accordance with the anonymous opinion of the Mishnah. So the Rabbim says, if she miscarriages and there's no blood, she's torn. Even if that piece was torn open and it's full of blood, because that could be the, the embryo, it's not dumb from the womb, it's dumb from that piece. Now, The Ramban rules in accordance with Rabbi Yehuda that EF shall please like a camera below dam. Says the Ramban, EF shall she yiftach rechem lele below dam she yazim in that. By the way, the Ramban was a doctor just like the Rambam was a doctor, he was a very noted doctor. The, Ram, the Ramban lived 200 years after the Rambam, about 100, 150 years after the Rambam. So there was more medical knowledge perhaps at that time. Can't have the uterus opening without some blood. Even though the, the, the fetus is not a, you know, a viable child. Even within miscarriage within 40 days. Anyone who gives birth needs seven clean days after whatever bleeding, the bleeding stops, you have to see seven clean days. The Ramban tells us what we've been learning all along for the last six months. Any blood, even the size of a mustard seed, could be a zava, and therefore needs zainiki. There's a nice biography of the Ramban here. This is also the position except by the Shulchan Aruch. So he holds like the Ramban. If she didn't see blood, she miscarried, we, she's going to be a nida. Says the Ramah, he quotes Rabbi Yehud, she You don't have to worry that maybe she had a child, you have to keep 40 or 80 days, because remember, it was a certain period of time after a male or a female, if she gave birth to a Vlad that she'd have to keep as well. But no, after if she's count seven and she's clean, there's no problem. Now, when a woman undergoes certain medical examinations, the physician may use an instrument to access and dilate the uterus. Does this type of dilation, which is a which it's not like an internal source, she miscarries a piece from inside her uterus. That's the cervix opening internally. This is an opening externally. Does that qualify as the Yefshel of Sikh Zakir, which renders a, a woman impure? Ravi Cheska Landau, right, the Noi de Behuda, rules that a sufficiently invasive medical exam would cause impurity. He says it makes no difference whether the source of the opening of the cervix came from the inside or came from the outside. The Rofa might put his finger or a kli. The Yehuda lived 1800. 1800. So there were medical procedures being done at that time. Medical procedures were being done and he, and, and he commented on it. So did the Chsam Soifer. They were the first of the Achronim some suffered died 1815, 1820. Noibihuda was 1790, 1800. You see in their truvis the, the modern age, the initial shilas that, 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 are, that are beginning to become very relevant, that a lot of the current modern day medical psat go back to some soifer and Noibihuda. Chacham Tzvi a little bit, but also in that period of time. Rubikiv Eger. The, the reason we hear, they're very, these are, Rabbi Kivega was also about the same time, 1780, 1790, uh, 1820. So these are the, the, the Gdoile HaChroinim 
that we rely on and in terms of modern psak. Says the Noyi Behuda. Doesn't make them whether she's young or old, like a postmenopausal woman, or whether she's pregnant or menika. You can't open up the uterus without dumb. Okay. However, the Chazoni is just going to have a different opinion. And then, of course, Rav Moshe and the Shevet Alevi, and then the Rav Mordechai Liao will give us uh, their opinions regarding this. And then we will learn about childbirth and C-section and about going to the mikvah during these days and miscarriage. So we have some very interesting topics to keep on coming. Any comments, questions? Haaros? Okay, hearing none. Uh, Daf Yomi guys, we'll do Daf Yomi tomorrow at eight o'clock. Otherwise, you. next Tuesday at uh, eight o'clock for a turbo. Okay, Chodesh uh, Tov to everybody. Chodesh Tov. Chodesh Tov. So the Chazan Rishon Ashri says that uh, the woman has.